These wonderful little creatures are the creation of Bert Chan, and this video documents how he arrived at this stage in their development, a timeline that stretches all the way back to Conway's original Game of Life. Among the long-term goals of artificial life is to simulate existing biological life and to create new life forms using artificial systems. These are expressed in the 14 open problems in artificial life detailed in this 2001 paper. In it, the questions are grouped into three separate categories. How does life arise from the non-living? What are the potentials and limits of living systems? And how is life related to mind, machines and culture? But it was problem three that caught the eye of an independent researcher called Bert Chan to determine whether fundamentally novel living organizations can exist. This was the basis of his 2019 paper. In it, he reports on a new system of artificial life called Lenia, a two-dimensional cellular automaton with continuous space-time and generalized local rules. Computer simulations show that Lenia supports a great diversity of complex autonomous patterns or life forms, bearing a resemblance to real-world microscopic organisms. More than 400 species in 18 families have been identified, many discovered via interactive evolutionary computation. They differ from other cellular automata patterns in being geometric, fuzzy, resilient, adaptive and rule generic. In the paper he presents the basic observations of the system regarding the properties of the background world and basic settings. A broad survey of the life forms categorizes them into a taxonomy and describes their morphological structures and behavioral dynamics, proposes possible mechanisms of their self-propulsion, self-organization and plasticity and also looks at how the study of Lenia would be related to biology, artificial life, and artificial intelligence. In 2020, further extensions of Lenia led to more emergent phenomena like interesting 3D and 4D patterns, self-replication, pattern emission, self-boundary, individuality, aggregated patterns, polymorphism, and intercommunicating colonies. Is there a limit on this digital universe? What kind of new pattern or emergent property will appear next? And what kind of questions or answers can we get from it? There have been numerous efforts in creating and studying novel mathematical systems that are capable of simulating complex lifelike dynamics. Swarm chemistry, reaction diffusion systems, cellular automata like the game of life and smooth life, and evolutionary systems like virtual creatures. I've even coded up a few of them myself. These systems have a common theme, if you have countless particles and localized interactions among them, then a complex system with interesting autonomous patterns will emerge. If you do a search for Conway's Game of Life in YouTube, you'll find thousands of videos on the subject. Do a search for Smooth Life and you'll find hundreds with a smattering of irrelevant topics thrown into the mix. But do a search for Lenia and well, it's slim pickings. This is largely down to the very simple rule set and ease of coding for Conway's Game of Life. He chose his rules carefully, after considerable experimentation, to meet certain criteria. There should be no explosive growth. There should exist small initial patterns with chaotic, unpredictable outcomes. There should be potential for universal constructors. And the rules should be as simple as possible. These rules can be condensed into the following. Well known and really easy to understand, they have been the source of many coding projects, from digital clocks all the way through to the amazing life in life setup. So is there a way to generalize these rules into a formula which can be played with by making adjustments to various parameters to better explore the search space? Turns out that there is, and the formula that applies to the game of life applies equally to smooth life as well as the Lenya universe and the creatures that reside there. All of these cellular automata conforms to the same type of rule set. You have an existing world state, defined at the cell or pixel level. You do something with that data point, normally involving its neighbor in some way. You add the output from that, or a portion of it, back onto the data point, And that gives you that cell's value for the next frame. In a video I did recently, the Gray-Scott Reaction Diffusion Formula, which allows two chemicals with differing diffusion and feed rates to interact. This uses the same approach. And when you make changes to the parameters in the formula, you get solitons to appear, interact and display exponential growth. 
In Bert Chan's paper, he outlines the following formula and how it applies to the game of life. It requires a very simple kernel and an equally simple growth mapping function. So what does all that mean? In the example shown, if we look at the cell in question, it has a value of 1 and 8 neighbours, one of which also has a value of 1. All other cells are set to 0. The kernel, or mask if you prefer, is as shown in red. You centre it over the cell and multiply the corresponding cell values by the kernel value and add up the result. This weighted sum calculation is the equivalent of calculating the convolution of the kernel with the cell. You take that value and apply a growth mapping function to it. Here we passed it a value of 1, so it will return a value of minus 1. This is then scaled by the dt parameter. I've set this to 1 for the game of life, but as you move into the discrete and continuous domains, it will be quite normal to set this to 0.1 or 0.01. It's also quite possible for a cell to end up below 0 or above 1 with this approach, so it's important to clip it to 0 or 1 if that's the case. If I apply it to a glider, you can see it in action. This is the familiar Game of Life glider and is displaying both the current and next frame values post-processing. Next is the kernel that's been applied in each frame. Of course, it's not just sitting in the centre of the frame, but it's being applied to each and every pixel using the convolution step just described. That weighted sum calculation looks like this when it's applied. And finally, it's processed through that growth mapping function and added back onto the original cell value and clipped to a value between 0 and 1. Another example would be the Smooth Life Glider. It's exactly the same as the steps before, but with a different kernel and mapping function. The final output gets added back onto the original cell value and clipped if needed. These are the same six steps detailed in the original paper. As we move from the binary on-off world of the game of life to the discrete world of real numbers, any cell can have a value between 0 and 1. And it's in the space of infinite numbers which reside between 0 and 1 where you'll find the creatures that inhabit the Lenia universe. The kernel in this case is a Gaussian bump. More sophisticated than those used previously, and it's also larger, and is applied to a greater area around the cell, an area known as its Moore neighborhood. The actual radius of the kernel for the Lenia universe is one of those parameters you should be able to adjust. There are many to choose from, ranging from Gaussian and polynomial through to trapezoidal and smooth life step-shaped kernel. I'm also showing here a cross-section through them so you can see their profile. Next is the output from the convolution step, which in turn is applied to the growth mapping function. This has now also changed from the blocky game of life definition to be continuous and smooth. Any of the creatures found in Lenia are normally defined by the kernel being used and also the shape of this function. This in turn, defined by its center point mu and standard deviation sigma. All I did was load it into Excel and play around with it. You can see the effect of setting it up with different values for mu and sigma and, as before, the output from the convolution step is simply passed to this function and the return value is then processed. It gets added back on to the original cell value and clipped if needed. A good starting point is the Gaussian bump kernel and setting mu and sigma to 0.14 and 0.03. And that's really all you need to get started with these. A weighted sum calculation with a kernel of your choosing, apply this to a growth mapping function, add the result to the current cell value and clip to a value between 0 and 1. Then rinse and repeat. Initializing the world state with random real numbers and by playing around with different kernels and the other parameters, you'll start to see the gliders putting in an appearance although it can take a few goes to get there. This was the same approach taken by Bert when he started evolving new species, but he takes it to a whole new level in his follow-up paper from last year. He starts to explore higher dimensions in Lenya to see what might be living there. The 2D arrays were upgraded to three or higher dimensions, and the algorithms used in the software were subsequently generalized to deal with multidimensional arrays. With the utilization of GPU parallel computing and better searching algorithms, stable solitons have been found. Their external shapes are almost always spherical, and their internal structures can be complex and highly symmetrical. In some cases, inner voids are arranged as vertices of platonic solids. Most solitons are motionless, but a few of them are oscillating, rotating, or directionally moving. He's also explored what might happen if you introduce multiple kernels and multiple channels. 
Most cellular automata have only one world array, so he decided to experiment with parallel worlds. In addition to the kernels feeding back to each channel, there are also cross-channel kernels for the worlds to interact with each other. Overall, chaotic behavior increases, but given the right parameters, the system can achieve even higher degrees of self-organization and persistence. There he discovered new or more common behaviors, individuality, self-replication, emission and growth. In a multi-channel world, each channel develops patterns according to its own rule, and at the same time, these patterns co-develop and influence each other through inter-world interactions. This curious phenomena was found only in one setting of a three-dimensional multi-kernel rule. There is one type of static spherical solitons, which can be interpreted as food, and one type of dynamic helical soliton, which would be the snake. A snake keeps contracting or extending linearly at one or both ends, giving an illusion of a moving snake, and when its extending end reaches one food dot, it merges with that inanimate dot, simulating ingestion, turning it into part of the living soliton and slightly elongates it. The snake also slightly changes directions towards dots within reach, giving an illusion of the snake pursuing food. Coding these things up is always nice, but if you don't have the time, then Bert's GitHub has made the full code available in Python and other languages. Very easy to download and install, and comes with a complete library of the linear lifeforms. As always, thanks for watching.